What's up guys and welcome back to Wall Street Millennial. On this channel, we cover everything related to stocks and investing. Throughout 2020 and 2021, the crypto market exploded in popularity as Bitcoin notched record high after record high. The early Bitcoin advocates looked like geniuses and made billions of dollars in paper gains. Crypto transformed from a fringe experiment to a legitimate asset class and institutional investors finally started taking it seriously. Bank of America even established a crypto research team because there was so much interest from their clients. This legitimacy was further enhanced by the direct listing of Coinbase, which debuted at a valuation of $86 billion. People started talking about how crypto and decentralized finance would revolutionize the economy and disrupt the traditional banking industry. But in 2022, much of these hopes have been dashed. Instead of being an uncorrelated hedge like many Bitcoin bulls claimed it would be, Bitcoin has lost more than half its value since the beginning of this year, wiping out most of its pandemic gains. And the recent price volatility has shown how fragile the entire ecosystem is. A few days ago, Celsius, which is one of the largest crypto yield platforms, suspended withdrawals for its 1.7 million users who hold billions of dollars worth of crypto on that platform. They blamed extreme market conditions. Imagine if you tried to buy something with your debit card, but the bank declined the transaction because market conditions were unfavorable. That's basically what's happening to the over 1 million Celsius customers right now. Celsius was one of the growing list of crypto projects, which promised users high yields on their crypto deposits. You could earn up to 18% on certain crypto holdings and 9% yield on stablecoins. These crypto platforms are not regulated by the SEC, and customer funds are not insured by any government body. So when your account is frozen, you have nobody to call. Now that Celsius has frozen its customers' accounts, people are starting to doubt the viability of crypto as an asset class. And this Celsius disaster comes just a few weeks after the Terra stablecoin collapse, which saw investors lose upwards of $40 billion. Many view this as the entire house of cards falling down. If people keep getting burned on new crypto projects like Terra and Celsius, eventually they could say enough is enough and stop investing in crypto altogether. That's one reason why we're seeing Bitcoin freefalling. Crypto companies like Coinbase are laying off thousands of workers, as many analysts think that we're heading into a new crypto winter. But given the scale of the recent disasters and how much confidence has been lost in the system, we could be at the beginning of a crypto ice age and the markets may never fully recover. The recent Terra and Celsius disasters show how risky unregulated crypto projects can be, with many investors losing their life savings overnight. That's why I use Moomoo for my investments, which is also the sponsor of this video. Moomoo is a commission-free trading app that allows you to invest in US stocks, ETFs, and even Hong Kong-listed stocks. Importantly, it is regulated by the SEC, FINRA, and SBIC. That means that customer securities holdings are protected up to $500,000, so you can rest assured that your stock portfolio is secure. Currently, Moomoo is running one of the most lucrative promotions in the industry. If you open a new account and deposit just $1, they'll give you 6 free stocks. If you deposit $100, they'll give you 7, and if you deposit $2,000, you'll get 10 free stocks. Not a bad reward for signing up to a commission-free brokerage. This promotion only lasts until the end of June, so make sure to click on the link in the description below and sign up for your Moomoo account now. And now back to the video. So what is Celsius and why are they now freezing their customers' accounts? Founded by the technologist Alex Mashinsky, Celsius promised to use the power of crypto to revolutionize the banking industry. The idea is banks give minuscule yields on their savings accounts, usually less than 1%. They take that money and lend it out at much higher rates, maybe 20% for a credit card balance. The massive spread between what banks pay depositors versus what they lend it out at makes them extremely profitable. Alex thought that by cutting out the middleman of the traditional banking system, Celsius could offer better rates to both borrowers and lenders. The idea is simple. You deposit your crypto or stablecoins into Celsius and earn a very high yield. You can make a yield of almost 10% with your Tether stablecoin, or roughly 10 times better than you could get at a traditional bank. They then lend this money out to borrowers at a slightly higher rate to make a small profit on the spread. This isn't too controversial. They're taking deposits and lending them out just like a traditional bank would do. However, the story doesn't end there. Celsius takes the crypto deposited by their customers and lends it out to outside institutions. They use this to fund the insanely high yields that they offer to depositors and also make a profit for themselves. One of the tools that they used for this was a crypto protocol called Lido. Lido allows you to earn staking rewards on various cryptos, most notably Ethereum. Ethereum is the second largest cryptocurrency after Bitcoin. It's quite a complicated system and there are actually two Ethereums. There's the legacy chain as well as a newer one called the Beacon chain. At some point, the two chains are supposed to merge to create a new unified Ethereum. 
Because they'll merge at some point into the same coin, the value of the two coins should theoretically be exactly the same. If one version falls below the other, you could buy the undervalued one and short the overvalued one to make a guaranteed profit once the merge happens. You deposit your Beacon Chain Ethereum coins into the Lido network, and in return they give you ST ETH coins. The coins that are locked up within Lido earn a yield, but you get the ST ETH which you can also make a yield on. You can get yield on top of yield which makes it very attractive to many crypto investors. Because the two Ethereums are expected to merge, the price of ST ETH has historically tracked regular ETH almost exactly. But a few days ago, this peg broke down with ST ETH trading at a significant discount. So what happened? As the crypto markets crashed in recent weeks, Celsius customers started withdrawing their coins. They were possibly trying to redeploy their assets into their stock trading accounts to take advantage of the massive stock market correction. But for whatever the reason, Celsius's customers were withdrawing and they needed crypto to make good on these withdrawals. Remember that Celsius put a lot of their client funds into ST ETH token. To make good on their withdrawals, they would have to sell the ST ETH. Theoretically, this shouldn't matter. Traders should be willing to buy the ST ETH for the same price of regular ETH in anticipation of the merge. So how is it possible that it's now trading at a roughly 6% discount? There are two main reasons. First off, the merge date has been delayed as a result of technical issues. Many people think it now won't happen until 2023, and some fear it may not happen at all. But what's even more important is the strategic nature of the crypto markets. There are many sophisticated crypto traders who are monitoring the situation and are attempting to take advantage of it. Celsius has billions of dollars worth of ST ETH which they'll eventually have to sell. When that happens, the massive selling pressure could send the price cratering. Crypto traders are strategically withholding liquidity from the market and waiting for Celsius to dump their entire stake. Why buy ST ETH now at a 6% discount when you could wait and buy it at a 10, 15, or even 20% discount? This puts Celsius in a disastrous position. They need to sell now to make good on their clients' withdrawals. But if they do this, they would make such a giant trading loss that they wouldn't have enough money to fund those withdrawals in full. That's why they were forced to freeze the accounts of their 1.7 million customers. Now they're in a high stakes poker game with the broader ST ETH market to see who will blink first. Celsius founder Alex Mashinsky says that they are working around the clock to find a solution to the problem. And in all likelihood, Celsius customers will likely get some of their money back eventually, although they may end up getting a significant haircut. But it's hard to overstate how stressful the situation is for Celsius customers. Many of them trusted the platform and put their entire life savings in it. Even if they do somehow manage to make their customers whole, it's probably over for Celsius. After this debacle, would you feel comfortable putting your money there? This is the problem with all these crypto platforms luring in customers with the promise of high yields. The crypto industry is like the wild west. There's very little regulation and each new protocol has an incentive to offer higher and higher yields to entice new customers regardless of how much risk this entails. Most of the time, the way that they achieve these yields is by doing a bunch of crazy yield farming or arbitrage strategies and the vast majority of their customers have no idea what they're doing behind the scenes. If you use a traditional bank, your deposits are FDIC insured. If you invest in something like Celsius or Terra and end up losing everything, there's zero protection. There's nobody to call and you're completely on your own. And the collapse of Celsius will have psychological ripple effects across the whole ecosystem. Over the past two years, many institutional money managers have gotten into the space as they finally thought that crypto was mature enough to be investable. Last year, Celsius raised hundreds of millions of dollars from a Canadian pension fund. There's a good chance that this investment could be a total loss. With this disastrous performance, pension funds will be more hesitant to make new investments in crypto. The problem with crypto is that it has very little interaction with the real economy. With very few exceptions, people don't use crypto to pay for their day-to-day -day transactions because the fees are too high and the coins are way too volatile. The vast majority of crypto transactions are just made between speculators betting on the price. It's basically just a giant casino. Some people make money and some people lose money, but very little real economic value is created, if any. And no matter how smart you think you are or how much blockchain wizardry you set up, there's just no way to make a 10% yield with no risk. While the crypto crash has been painful for many people, it may end up being a good thing for the economy. Many of the world's smartest engineers have taken jobs at crypto companies like Coinbase or Celsius. The crypto industry is a giant casino that creates no real value. So all of these talents have gone to waste. Now that the bubble has finally burst, these crypto companies are laying off their workers hand over fist. While we can sympathize with these now unemployed workers, at least they now have the opportunity to find a job in the real economy and contribute real tangible value to society. Alright guys, that wraps it up for this video. What do you think about the Celsius fiasco? 
Do you think it spells the beginning of a new crypto ice age? Let us know in the comments section below. As always, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Wall Street Millennial, signing out.